Next up, guys, the talk of the town. Let me pull up my bet MMA here uh, because I don't think that I have missed on a Benoit St. Denis fight yet. Let's see here. We are three for three on Benoit St. Denis. I had easy dose, uh, 4.3 units at minus 215. I had half a unit on Benoit St. Denis plus 250 against Ismael Bonfim. And I had 1.13 units on Benoit St. Denis against Tiago Moises last time out. Haven't lost a bet on this guy yet. Absolutely love this guy. Love what he brings to the table. Love his style. And, you know, without tooting my own horn, I felt like I got the dynamic for his last fight perfect. You know, a lot of people, a lot of sharp people as well, told me that they did not think that he was going to be able to deal with a guy who's as technical and skilled as Moises. But what I said was, you know, this guy, Benoit St. Denis, he's not a normal guy. You know, I bet money against him and I almost shit my pants with Eliza Zaleski because y'all just saw what Zaleski can do. Even at this age, even with all the stuff going on against the hype job or not, he went out there and he put on a heck of a show. He went out and put on a heck of a fight. And I thought that he showed that Renat, good fighter, but not head and shoulders above, you know? And I just think that when you look at a guy um, you know, like this in Benoit Saint Denis, the beating he was willing to take, the damage he was willing to incur, and the ability to recover and continue to throw and come back and then start to put the pressure late in that fight. He's just an insane physical athlete, a specimen. And when you talk about why do I like a guy like Benoit Saint Denis, just as like a broad archetype of fighter, it's because when I know that you will give everything in the octagon, you will not quit on me at all. You you will rather uh you know uh death before dishonor right that is like uh the cliche fighting saying but that is like benoit saint denis death before dishonor dude this guy was not willing to go down he would rather do a quick sprint lap around the octagon to face you again uh because he just wants to fight so with all that being said i'm a matt frivola guy too i like matt frivola i think very highly of the guy let's go back and pull it up um I bet the under in the Frivola and Gennaro Valdez fight. I bet Frivola by sub against Terrence McKinney and against Drew Dober. So I have been on the side of like, man, this guy, Matt Frivola is underrated. If you guys remember, I go back in the day, I talked about this guy easily outgrappled Jalen Turner. Nobody talks about it. Nobody says that like he's really quality on the men. He's got these takedowns. He's got this wrestling upside. But then I think about this fight, right? And everything is about matchups. It's always about this guy against this guy at this time. And let's look at the intangibles here. Let's look at some of the things that don't change with the weather, right? We got 33-year-old Matt Frivola taking on 27-year-old Benoit Saint-Denis. So the much younger fighter here is Benoit Saint-Denis. We talk about sometimes an angle I look for on this show, the younger guy with more experience. They've got very comparable levels of experience here. Maybe not quite at that UFC level, but certainly overall in MMA, very similar levels of experience. And a lot of the competitions for Benoit Saint-Denis have been as high as 170 pounds, including that loss against Eliza Zaleski Dos Santos, his only one of his career at 170 pounds. On the other side of things, guys, Matt Frivola has multiple losses via finish in the UFC. He was knocked out, uh, in round one by Terrence McKinney. He was knocked out in round one um, by another gentleman. I'm drawing a blank on his name. I just pulled it up. Polo Reyes. Uh, he was easily out-wrestled by Armand Sarukian um, for large segments of that fight in route to a unanimous decision loss. So there have been several guys who were able to get the jump, unfortunately, on Matt Frivola in the UFC. Now, he's put together an admirable win streak. Drew Dober knocked him out. Basically, the first guy to do so, really impressive stuff. Atman Azaitar put him down, uh, one for the culture, one for the boys. At uh, Madison Square Garden, I believe, as an underdog, absolutely exceptional stuff. Awesome win for our guy Frivola there. Uh, beat Gennaro Valdez, back and forth war, but multiple, multiple, multiple knockdowns, really awesome stuff. So a lot of good signs there uh, for Matt Frivola. But the split decision win over Luis Pena, the draw against Lando Venata, the knockdowns in many of these fights all lead me to think that while he's very talented and while he's got skills in each and every one of these positions, I do worry a little bit about the durability of Matt Frivola. You know, um, I do think that Matt Frivola is a guy that sometimes gets drawn into a brawl 
that sometimes gets drawn into throwing hands in the pocket, you know, maybe not taking the path of least resistance. Sometimes his corners yelling at him, Matt, go for the takedowns. What did I tell you guys about all these sub submission tickets that I've been burning? Cause the guys out there standing and banging and throwing down in the pocket. And I love Matt Frivola, but when you stand and bang in the pocket, guys like Terrence McKinney, who he is head and shoulders better than in MMA will beat you from time to time, right? If you're going to invite risk, if you're going to fight a volatile style, you're going to invite more people to beat you. You're going to have more up and down results. And I do think that Matt Frivola has got skills everywhere. He's getting better on the feet too. But I just think that this is the kind of spot where um, both guys are live, you know? Uh, so am I endorsing minus 200 Benoit St. Denis? Maybe not. You know, uh, I think that Benoit St. Denis, great fighter, but look at the prices that I bet him at. Uh, you know, I bet him at plus 250. I bet him at minus 113. I haven't bet him at minus 200, you know, uh, because it's a little bit harder to, to get there. But I am just saying, uh, I got a shout out Glimbot here. Great call. He says, Liam is the New York boy going to teach BSD how to wrestle once again. That would be cool. It would be awesome. It's in New York. That would be something special. But I also think that Benoit St. Denis is a special guy, you know, and I just have to level with you guys. The UFC doesn't always talk about guys like they want to move them up the card and they want to promote them and all these things, right? I think that they want to promote Benoit St. Denis if they can. And he's got to deliver. He's got to do his end of the deal. But they're putting him in a big fight card, on a big card, on a UFC main card. They're trying to get this guy more exposure, in my view. And they're trying to give Frivola a winnable fight, a fun fight, fight of the night type of scrap. And they're trying to give Benoit St. Denis a winnable fight, fight of the night, that kind of scrap. They can make you a household name. They can make you a little bit more known to UFC fans. John uh, Anik talks about Benoit St. Denis, potential future UFC title challenger, potential future UFC contender. He's still very young. Frivola, he's a guy that's paid a lot of dues. He's been around. He's gotten a lot of wins. He's gotten better at his craft. But we've also seen that Frivola can be chin checked. And it's happened to him in the UFC. Um, four and two career to the knockout. Never been submitted, though. Three and oh career to the sub. A lot of uh, Benoit St. Denis wins have come by way of submission. I would be very surprised if he submitted Matt Frivola. Uh, I think that if he is going to win this fight, he's got to do it by knockout or decision more often than not. Uh, I think that on the other side of things, Frivola would be wise to try and test the grappling of Benoit St. Denis, try and test the wrestling, try and test that cardio and see how it holds up in a pure wrestling grappling match. But I do just think to myself, Benoit St. Denis, I think he's got the better hardware. I think he's a little bit bigger and a little bit stronger. I think he's got the better durability. So I ultimately have to favor the God of War, Benoit St. Denis. Uh, I think it's going to be a hell of a fight. I, I think they're both getting $50,000. Um, but I just I just have a feeling that James hit this one on the head here. You know, uh, Love both these guys. Got a bad feeling for Vola will get cracked being too ballsy in the pocket. I kind of agree. Uh, I think that Benoit, you could say the same thing. I just think he takes a shot a little bit better because he's a little bit younger. Um, so we'll have to see. We'll have to see. It's a really fascinating fight. But either way, I'm loving it. Uh, if the New York boy teaches him how to wrestle, you know we got to claim that. But just I got to call it like I see it, guys. And and I do think, um, you know, I put... Benoit St. Denis, one ever so slight tier above Matt Frivola right now in my theoretical uh, lightweight rankings, but that could all change on Saturday night. And I've been a big Frivola guy for a long time. So not looking to lay minus 200 chalk against him. I've advocated in the past people not to do that uh, and to take Frivola uh, or to to pass on his fights, uh, you know, dog or pass type situations. But now I'm just looking at it like um, Frivola, Opened, I think, plus 330 in this spot. You know, I think odds makers opened up in Washington Denis around minus 400. It's come all the way down, 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 down. And I get that because I think both these guys are are um, willing to put on a show, willing to put on a very uh, entertaining scrap. But I just think uh, on hardware, I would I would favor Ben Washington Denis here, if ever so slightly.